Hello, Lena. Welcome to Mr. Quaker's Teachers. Um, in this lesson, I'll be providing a detailed character profile and traits for Father Benedict from um, Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie's novel Purple Hibiscus. So my analysis will be helpful for those who are sitting in the GCSE or IGCSE or any other kind of exam where you may be examined on your knowledge of Father Benedict. Let's dive in. Let me begin by speaking about the character um, Father Benedict. So we see him in the opening portions of the novel. So Campbell introduces um, introduces um, Father Benedict to the to the reader, and we, she tells us that he's a white British priest who oversees Saint Agnes in Inugu. So that's where their own family um, parish. He's the one that um, organizes mass there. He's shown to be a very conservative priest. And so he's very friendly with Chief Eugene, who is like the, one of the main characters in the novel. He has like a supporting character. And we see him in the opening portions. And then uh, when Father, um, Chief Eugene or Papa goes for confession, when um, um, Adehuka dies. You know, so he's like somebody who is a very close confidant of Papa or um, Chief Eugene. Or, um, I can't believe he describes him as uh, Papa or... Um, refers to him as papa so his conservative nature as a priest is seen in the actions that he takes right he we are going to see later on how he tries to control the members of his parish uh, with latin and other things so he's a very close ally confident and oftentimes plays the role of a personal praise singer for chief eugene achike or papa uh, so you extols him higher than jesus christ according to Kamli. that's what Kamli tells us so again i'll 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 talk more in detail about that. So he's a confidant, he's a con um, confidant of um, Chief Eugene. He's a conservative priest as well. He never speaks against the domestic violence that Chief Eugene met out against his family. So he never does that. In fact, when Kambili, later on, Kambili is beaten and hospitalized, it is Father Benedict that comes to anoint her. Right. If he, while he was anointing her, he he ought to ask out. I mean, what was the circumstance? What happened? But we never see that from um, Father Benedict. So he never speaks out against um, Chief Eugene's excesses. But instead, he constantly sings his praise. You know, thinking, making Chief Eugene think that he's better than his fellow parishioners. In fact, later he says, "Let us be like uh, Brother Eugene." They refer to him as our new priest. That's what Kamli tells us. Father Benedict is referred to as our new priest. Even though he had been their priest for seven years. Because he's white. So we see that um, um, injection of inferiority complex by the parishioners because they are black. I think um, Father Benedict does not respect too much the other con congregants but then, or parishioners. But then he respects Chief Eugene because of his wealth. According to Kambili, his parishioners did so because he still looked new, in quote. So he still looked new. Again, that idea of white, you know, being better than black. In terms of his physical description, this is how Kambili describes him. Even though Father Benedict had been at St. Agnes for seven years, people still refer to him as, quote, our new priest, end quote. Perhaps they would not have if he had not been white. He still looked new. The colors of his face, the colors of condensed milk, and cut open sauce up, had not turned at all in the fierce heat of seven Nigerian Amatans. And his British nose was still as pinched and as narrow as it always was. The same nose that had had me worried that he did not get enough air when he first came to Inugu. So we see how he's presented, he's described, like condensed milk. So he's, you know, very white, he's not tanned, and then his nose is pointy as well. And in Campbell's mind, because of the, the way his nose is, I mean, it means he does not breathe enough air. Now, the very first trait we see about him is that he practices a very conservative view of Catholicism. His conservative view of Catholicism made him institute a number of rules for his parishioners. He set in place the following rules for his African parishioners. The first evidence is that he directed their posture for communion. So how they stood, he directed them. And Kamli tells us 
hear that. Quote, the rest of the congregation trooped to the altar, palms pressed and extended. So it's like this. Like a saucer held sideways. Just as Father Benedict had taught them to do. So we see here that he had a very conservative view of Catholicism. And when he came to the parish, the Enugu Parish St. Agnes, he instituted um, a new way to receive communion. The second evidence is that he determined the language of, of mass. He said Latin should be used, not Igbo. Remember, the people in Enugu around Kambiri are Igbos. So the idea is that their language is not good enough to organize mass in. And we see that in the quote, Father Benedict had changed things in the parish, such as insisting that the credo and the key be recited only in Latin. Igbo was not acceptable. So essentially, he's, he's sort of um, dismissed the language of his congregants or his parishioners as not being good enough, except Latin. But the, th the thing is that Jesus himself didn't speak Latin. So we see here that he, he not only directed a posture for communion, but also he determined the kind of language you should use during Mass. And I've written here that Igbo is the vernacular. So that's the language that is spoken by his parishioners, the people of eastern Nigeria. Enugu is found in eastern Nigeria. The third evidence is that he dissuaded his parishioners from clapping their hands. And we see that in the quote. Also, hand clapping was to be kept at a minimum. Lest the solemnity of mass be compromised. So their posture, their language, clapping of hands. And we know that in African um, culture, for example, there's a lot of clapping and dancing, which is not too, which is not the same in European culture where he's from. But I try to compel his congregants or his parishioners to keep hand clapping to a minimum. The fourth evidence is that he said Igbo or native songs were only permitted during offertory. So it's only when they are taking offertory that you can sing an Igbo song. And we see that in the quote, but he allowed offertory songs in Igbo. He called them native songs. So for me, I think that Father Benedict is very dismissive of the culture, the, the, the language, the attitude of his parishioners. That has nothing to do with religion. Essentially, he's visited on his European culture or customs, you know, and he wants that to be, for them to replicate that there. The second trait that we see about him is that he, condes he condescended the religious practices of his congregants. So not only is he conservative, but he also condescended the rel religious practices of his congregants. And we see that in the evidence that he describes their songs as native songs, right? A native song. And banned them singing it except during the taking of effortry. So essentially, if you didn't understand Latin and English, you hardly understood what was happening during Mass. He also barred them from clapping their hands by commenting that it reduces the solemnity of mass. Which is, not, which is not, you know, which is arguable because in the Bible, for example, there are multiple instances where people clap their hands. And then we also see how he condescended the religious practice of his congregants in the fact that he decided that every member of his church, except Chief Eugene, was not letting their light shine before men. Quote, so, light shine before men. So, according to him, Everybody should emulate Chief Eugene's attitude. And as a reader, we know that he's a very, he's a two-faced character. Somebody who is very affable, generous, um, um, you know, a public. He's also modest as well. But then privately, he's very violent and controlling. A control freak. Hello, learners. I hope you've enjoyed the lesson so far. This is a sample analysis of the novel Purple Hibiscus by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. The complete course contains video analysis of the characters, settings, themes, conflicts, etc. To assess the full analysis, purchase the entire course at mrquickestitches.com. Find the purchase links in the description below. See you in class.